I'm Dana and today I want to talk about the negative impact of masking because I feel like I quite often talk about how difficult it's been for me to unmask, I talk about how it often just slips on when I don't want it to, it's led me into situations that I didn't necessarily really at all want to be in. You know I feel like I'm quite vocal about all the ways that I am trying to unmask and like discover my true autistic self and sort of along the way perhaps a little bit encouraging other people to unmask and I feel like it can come across as being quite irrelevant and quite silly and especially when so many of us have like specifically formed this mask in order to be able to survive in society you know like it's there for a reason and then I'm out here like what if you just like acted more autistic though I see how there can be a sort of disconnect between the two or at least I I feel like there is a disconnect between the two that I want to bridge the gap between. So that's the intro, we're gonna get into it now. I'm not very good at structuring videos but I like to think that the content is otherwise helpful to someone at some point somewhere. So the biggest negative impact of masking for me is the one we're gonna talk about first and that was that I just had no idea who I was as a person. Like I knew that I liked Doctor Who and Lord of the Rings, you know? I knew that I liked fashion but didn't really know what kind of styles I leaned towards, what kind of colours I liked. You know, I had these inklings of someone that I might be but then I left my house or I spent time with my parents in my house or around my brothers or around people I was trying to be friends with and I would just become this different person. I'd sit there and say things that I didn't mean and engage in activities that I didn't find fun and didn't really want to be a part of and just do this stuff almost like on autopilot like it didn't feel like I was making choices like I was actually physically even there it was like my actual self just like took a back seat in the back of my head and autopilot took over to try and make me be normal and it meant that like I spent my entire life up until getting my autism diagnosis and being able to look into masking and learn about it constantly questioning like who am I actually? Like I didn't feel like I had my own interests, I didn't feel like I knew how to be a person in front of people, like the pure anxiety I would feel when someone just looked at me and I still get anxious when people look at me, I still don't like being perceived, it's definitely something I'm still unpacking but during especially like say maybe 14 to 20 was when I was like most heavily masking and it'd be like I would put on clothes that I didn't like, you know, like the outfits that I was putting together and posting on Instagram were outfits that I kind of thought were ugly. I just sort of thought it was what everyone else wore. And then I'd have my moments where I'd be like, no, I need to find like my own personal style and like figure everything out. And I just wouldn't be able to because I had no idea what I actually liked. I just knew that I needed to slot in and fit in and look like everyone else and be like everyone else because the consequences of not being are fucking horrible. But I also knew that like in my own private downtime because I spend and spent a lot of time alone I didn't even know who I was in those moments you know like I would just scroll through Instagram and scroll through Tumblr because I was like I don't know what my interests are I don't know what I want to do right now if I'm not around someone to set the mood and to, to force the mask on and to like mirror them I don't know what I like or who I am or what I'm going to do with my time. Like I spent most of my life having like any moment alone. I was just like, oh shit, what do I do now? And that's been like one of the best parts of unmasking for me is that I will be sat and I'll be like, oh, I'm a bit bored. I'll do something artsy. I'll write a song. I'll practice this, you know, like unmasking has really allowed me to like unveil who I actually am underneath it all. And even though it's still very difficult to show that to other people and unmask around other people, I feel like I have a semblance of who I am as a person, you know? It's helpful. I already touched on my next point during that section, but I partook in so many things that I didn't want to be a part of. I think for me personally, my mask very much falls in with like the fight or flight, freeze and fawn instinct. So once I'm so uncomfortable that I can't unmask, which happens, I don't feel like I've seen other people talk about that, but there's a lot of situations, like I said, where it feels like my actual like consciousness takes a back seat and it's just the mask, it's just the masked version of me doing the things on autopilot with me having, it feels like very little control over my own actions and it's honestly quite scary. When I was younger that meant that like I started smoking and drinking quite young because everyone around me was and it felt silly not to and I'd just mask up to the point where it didn't even feel like there was like peer pressure per se you know like I don't remember many times that people like said that I should smoke or should, said that I should drink I just had this mask slip down where I'd be like yeah let's get the booze in I like I didn't want to drink you know I had fucking school in the morning half the time and I, I thought for a long time that I had like struggles with alcohol and like a very addictive personality 
but when I stopped hanging around with those people and that mask that I had around those specific people was no longer like in use I didn't feel any need to drink I didn't particularly want to drink you know I still very occasionally drink where I was sure in that point I was drinking all the time and I was actively encouraging the drinking to happen because it, it just slipped on and it didn't feel like I was actually making those choices or saying those things or doing the things it just happened and that's the thing is that like I feel like a lot of autistic people can end up in very dangerous situations because our masks just fall into the situation like I've personally had a lot of sexual situations where I'm like I'm not entirely sure I wanted to do that and like the person that it was with you know has no reason to think that I'm not consenting they have no reason to think that I'm in any way questioning anything or not wanting to engage in the situation but the mask has fallen on they're just seeing the mask and me being like oh, yeah like okay when in reality like once it's happened and once it's over it doesn't feel like I made the choice it feels like I was just so uncomfortable and masked so much that somebody else took my body and did it it's very odd it's very uncomfortable it's really not nice and it's definitely one of the main reasons that I was like I need to learn to unmask and stop doing that the other main reasons that I wanted to learn to unmask and have started actively like trying to unmask and trying to be more myself and everything is that it's just really fucking tiring and completely unsustainable this might not be the case for everyone but it very much is for me like high school was an absolute nightmare for me because i had to mask all day every day and i'd get home from school and all i wanted to do was sit and watch telly or listen to music because i had no energy left for anything else just from the act of masking by the time i got around to college i was living with my abusive partner who i massively massively had to mask around at all times you know like to a, a good part of the abuse was very emotional and vocal and him trying to shape me into what he wanted to be you know like he'd correct my opinions on things that don't have a right or wrong answer and things like that so not only did I create the mask for him he then helped me to like further shape the mask to try and be what he wanted so I was masking like that at home and having that put on me while I was at home and then going to college and having to mask in front of all of the people in college as well and that was by far my cringiest era. I was doing music in college and the mask that fell on for that situation was so cringy and so like, oh, it just makes me cringe to look back on. Like I was just, everyone around me could see that I was trying so hard and I was like, I'm literally trying so hard not to try so hard and I can't stop trying so hard. You know, so eventually having to, like I was literally having to mask 24 seven. Like I wasn't getting time off when I was at home. It was 24 seven. It's not sustainable. I couldn't do it. I dropped out of college. Like I don't have an education. I'm not an educated person because I couldn't maintain the mask all the time. And I understand that like, that's a very specific situation. But I also, as someone who now, spend so much time unmasked and just being myself and being alone to be myself you know it's very difficult for me when the mask does fall on it's so much more tiring than it used to be and to tie into that it's so much harder to create and maintain relationships and friendships when you're masking all the time i have an absolute fear that I'm a very different person to people when I first meet them versus further down the line. And I do feel like that's why a lot of my friendships and relationships last like six months to a year and then either have some sort of big blowout or just completely taper off. You know, it's because they've met me where I'm masking and I'm mirroring them and I'm being a very specific type of person. And then each time they meet me after that, I'm a little bit more comfortable and I'm a little bit more myself. And they don't necessarily like myself. The actual real me might not be someone they want to be friends with. You know, like we might not even actually really connect and mesh when it's the real me. But I will mask so hard and be try so hard to be friendly. I don't know if I'm actually being friendly, I won't lie. I think I just smile a lot and laugh at everyone's jokes, honestly. But I try really hard to be friendly, you know? So if a complete mask falls on, which is the friendliest version of me, I won't lie, I will be the perfect best friend for them. I will like, I'm practically them. We are so similar because the mask has created a complete mirror of your personality and I am so unintentionally trying to be you. And it's weird and I don't enjoy it either. And it 100% means that further down the line, when they see who I actually really am, they feel like they've been cheated or lied to. And I honestly kind of feel like I've been cheated or lied to as well because I thought I had a friend and suddenly I'm not feeling like myself and they don't want to be my friend. You know, it's very, very difficult and it's not what I want to be doing. And it, I've had a lot of people accuse me of being manipulative and it's one of those things where I'm like the intention is not to manipulate but I see why you would feel like that because I acted like a completely different person at the start of our friendship versus six months in like I see why you would think that it's not necessarily the case 
it's one of those but I don't want to invalidate anyone that said that even though they said it about Lil Old Me but like I see why you would assume that's the behaviour that's happening obviously it's not what I'm trying to do I'm not trying to get anything out of a friendship outside of being friends but I can see why me changing my personality halfway through makes it look like I'm trying to do something and it similarly sucks on my end because a lot of the time that means that within six to twelve months of meeting someone and liking someone they're starting to get annoyed with me you know the autistic traits come out i'm not masking anymore it's not even just that i'm a slightly different person it's that i'm now an autistic person i've stopped making eye contact with you my voice and my text and whatever else might start sounding blunt because i'm not editing it 73,000 times to try and make sure it's just the right level of friendly for this person you know the more that the mask drops the more autistic i am and as much as I don't think it should be the case, a lot of people find us quite annoying. Or at least find me very annoying. Like, it's I, I, my last relationship, I watched her get like more and more annoyed with me as the time went on. The more autistic I was, the more she was like, oh my god, no, I love autistic people, y'all are so cute. And I could just see the absolute like, pain and malice in her eyes. She hated me. She didn't hate me, it wasn't that bad. But she just, there were so many more times that I would see a look on her face where I was like, oh, I've just pissed her off, I don't know how. And things like that that and it feels you know it feels fucking horrible to feel like you're slowly unpeeling your personality to show people and the more you peel away to show your true self the more they're like oh I didn't expect it to be like that I'm not a fan and that leads me to my final point which I'm not sure applies I'm never sure anything in these videos applies to anyone I'll give but I'm especially unsure of this one which is that once I can't mask I can't mask you know, whether it's because I'm having sensory overwhelm or something else has happened to trigger a meltdown, I, the more that I've unmasked, the more I cannot control my meltdowns and it's kind of scary and it's kind of not what I wanted, but that's the way it be right now, you know? Once I'm comfortable enough around someone, even if I want to mask around them so that they don't think I've changed, so that they want to continue being my friend, so that I communicate better, you know? Like, I tend to have a better sort of, like, engagement in conversations when I'm masking. I'm not someone who's ever had a good social mask like I just I don't have enough whatever it takes to form a good social mask I've always been very awkward I've always been very shy I've always been very anxious I you know like if we met in real life I would not be able to have a conversation where I sound like this to you I would not be able to do it I'd be very oh hi it's nice to meet you like the amount of times that my best friend has to tell people my name when, like, when we meet people together because they straight up don't hear me say it like it's very very difficult but once it's people that I'm comfortable with, I just can't mask anymore. And that means if we're having like conversations in a smaller group or whatever else, I can't mask to be like socially engaging and friendly and make eye contact with people and whatever else. Like I, see, it varies a lot because with some friends, I feel like I'm the person that leads the conversation. I'm the person that like speaks most in that friendship, in that situation. And then with other friends, they definitely speak more than me and I'm more of a listener and, you know, different friends are different situations. And as much as like they're different versions of myself, they feel like different versions of myself, you know, they're just different situations that I enjoy being in. It, it's not the same as masking. But that can often mean as well that if I'm with those people in other situations where I'm not necessarily as comfortable, but they are like a safe person. They're someone I trust and someone I'm comfortable around. I won't be able to mask, like if I'm with them out in public, if I'm with them out doing stuff, you know? I physically like, I, I can't do it. I'm my anxious, autistic, weird little self and I can't stop being that. And it's so frustrating because usually even the mask slips on all the way its own. I don't even have to put any work into it. Or I can do the like three deep breaths we're in the picture you know and like do it and speak to people and do what I need to do and all of a sudden if I'm fucking comfortable around someone I can't do that like I had a job centre appointment recently that I was really anxious about and my friend was like do you want me to come and I was like I would love for you to come with me I would feel so much more comfortable but if I'm more comfortable I probably won't be able to speak to these people in the job centre I physically like will not be able to make myself speak I might have a meltdown the sensory issues will be higher than they usually are because I don't have to just ignore it and focus in and do what I need to do you know like sometimes the mask comes in really really handy sometimes I would not be able to survive without masking 
and having someone there that I'm comfortable enough with to not be able to mask is kind of terrifying. Like all of a sudden I cannot function like a person and they're going to see that because a lot of my friends obviously only see me in situations where I'm comfortable. And as much as I'm trying to, you know, accept my autistic self and unpack the internalised ableism that I think all of us have around things like that, I still don't want to see my friend, like my friends to see me at my most autistic. I don't want my friends to see me have a meltdown. I don't want to see my friends to see me like fucking hitting a wall repeatedly, you know? Like, I don't want my friends to see the worst parts of myself. And all of a sudden, I'm removed of the ability to hide them because I'm comfortable. Fucking annoying. Like... <laughs> But that is my final point of this video. If you have any input, if you have any of your own thoughts on this, if you want to just add to the discussion, I love getting comments and it'd be really cool if you commented on this one. If you like this, you can subscribe to me because I post very similar content to this on Tuesdays, Thursdays and Sundays. And I also post daily over on TikTok and occasionally over on Instagram and Twitter. If you want to support me monetarily, you can also follow me over on Patreon or do a one-time donation over on Kofi. But there's never any pressure, you do not have to. YouTube should pay me more appropriately for how much goddamn work I put into this crap. <laughs> but if you want to help me out, it's always very, very appreciated. I just don't want to put pressure on, you know? But like Patreon people get to see videos earlier so you get some benefits from it at least. But that is all I wanted to say for this video. So whoever you are, wherever you are, if you're having a lovely, if you're having a lovely morning, evening, day, afternoon, week, month, year. And I will see you again in a couple of days.